You've probably heard that when a burglar decides which house to target, they start by casing it. This means that they watch the owners, find out information about their routine, and determine the best time for entering their home. By the time they're ready to commit the crime, they already know for sure when there won't be anybody inside or when the owners will be distracted. One of the tricks thieves use to gather information about your routine is so simple that you may not even give it a second thought. But the next time you hear a quiet crackle under the sole of your shoe, stop and check what it was. The chances are high that you'll find yourself face-to-face with a crushed cookie. If that's the case, it's your clue that something has gone terribly wrong. The thing is, this is a rather effective tool criminals use to find out if you've left on a trip or when exactly you come home in the evening. A cookie is such an innocent object that people don't usually give it much thought, if they even notice it at all. You arrive home, step on the cookie, make it crumble, and automatically reveal all your secrets to burglars. They know for sure if the house is lived in and can also figure out the schedule of its owners. Things get even worse if you're away from home. The cookie under the doormat remains whole, thus alerting criminals that the house is perfect for a break-in. So, if you find some treats under your doormat, that's pretty bad news. Someone is interested in your house and watching it. It might be a good idea to notify the police or take some safety measures. Now, the ploy with a cookie is just one of the numerous tricks used by burglars. One more sign that can alert you to the fact that you're being watched is white pebbles left near the house or in the driveway. This means that a criminal has already visited your home and marked it as worth entering. Another reason why thieves may have left the pebbles is to indicate that your house stays empty during the day. So, if you're walking along the street and notice a USB flash drive sticking out of a curb or a wall, Don't get confused. You have most likely stumbled across a dead drop. Despite its ominous name, this is a global art project that has borrowed some tricks from the world of spies and espionage. Lots of people who know about this project are happy to be able to put on their black coat and dark sunglasses and go to swap confidential information with others. The thing is that many decades ago, spies had their own ways to exchange secret materials. There was a live drop when spies met in person, but this was often extremely dangerous. That's why a dead drop system was invented. In this case, some loose bricks in a wall in an alleyway hid important documents that had to be picked up later. Nowadays, there are more than 1,500 dead drops all over the world, and the accumulated data on these flash drives reaches 10 terabytes. You can come across a dead drop on any continent you visit, except Antarctica, maybe because there are not so many walls there. So, if you find one, what do you do with it? First of all, it's highly inadvisable to connect random USB flash drives to your computer. You never know what viruses are lurking there, looking forward to destroying your hard drive content. And while risk is a part of the game, don't overdo it. If you're 100% sure that you want to play, secure your computer as well as you can, or even better. Secondly, you can't even guess what information will be waiting for you on a flash drive. Anyone can download videos, photos, or text files, and this has already led to several problems. Speaking of which, have you got a parcel with a USB stick in it? Whatever you decide to do with it, don't plug the flash drive in. Such cases have been more and more frequent in Australia. The police warn people that hackers have invented a new tactic. They drop unmarked memory sticks to letterboxes. It'll probably come as no surprise that these devices contain malware able to mess up your computer. They evidently rely on human curiosity and, in all honesty, it pays off. People can't fight an inexplicable desire to check the contents of a mysterious gift. As a result, almost half of USB sticks received by post get plugged in. After that, people start having serious problems with their laptops and computers. For example, fraudulent media begins to stream service offers, or computer viruses harm files and programs on a PC. So, no touching the free flash drive, okay? Now, you leave a shopping mall, your office, an airport, and go to the parking lot to find your car. You unlock it and put the key in the ignition. When you're about to start your vehicle and drive away, you see something strange on your windshield. Is that a $100 bill wrapped around your wiper? Oh, you could certainly find a way to spend this unexpected gift. 
But do you really think someone accidentally put money on your windshield and forgot all about it? Beware, this is nothing but a ruse. Because, as soon as you get out of your car to get a closer look at this mysterious banknote, the owner of the banknote will take action. They will get into your car and drive off at a record-breaking speed. Let's admit that no one would turn off their ignition and take their belongings with them if they got out of their car to check the windshield for a C-note. As a result, in under a minute, you'll lose your car, your wallet, and your documents, and you'll be left stranded in the parking lot. People have recently started to find some article of clothing, like a shirt for instance, lying on their windshield or wrapped up in their wipers. If you ever happen to be one of these people, don't fall into this trap and don't try to remove the object. Just get in your car and drive away as fast as you can from the place you were parked. This seemingly misplaced garment is actually a new con being used by muggers and thieves. It works like this. If you see some random piece of clothing that prevents your wipers from moving or obscures your view, your first reaction will be to remove it, of course. But while you're distracted untying it or trying to get it off, the criminal has plenty of time to jump you. The most common place for this sort of scam is parking garages. They're usually badly lit and pretty deserted, which means there are few witnesses around and plenty of dark spaces for the attacker to lie in wait. Now, if one day you come home and notice some graffiti or markings on your door or house, call the police immediately. Even if it just looks like a teenage prank or a simple scratch, It's better to be safe than sorry, because burglars use certain marks to tell other criminals different things about your house. For example, something resembling a Roman numeral 2 means that the homeowners are rich, so the place is a great target. On the other hand, a crossed circle tells other burglars that there's nothing valuable to take from the house. Hmm, kind of makes you want to mark your own house like that. Now, a long horizontal rectangle divided into four parts means the place has a big aggressive guard dog. A triangle divided into two parts by a vertical line tells criminals to hit the place only at night, while a reversed one says that a house or apartment is free after dinner. And something looking like a combined A and K lets their fellow burglars know that the house is always full of people. Hey, did you know there's even a fraternity for burglars who love to steal desserts named Iota Grab a Pie? (laughs) Sorry I made that up. A new trick being used by car thieves, and that's the trick with a coin. They slip it into the space between the door and the door handle. When a car owner thinks they've locked the door with a remote, the vehicle is, in fact, still open. The coin prevents the lock on one of the doors from working. As soon as the owner walks away from the car, the thief has no problems at all opening the door and driving away. Another trick. As soon as there's some public gathering, a big party, or even a busy day at the mall, car thieves make an announcement over the PA system that a particular car, chosen by them of course, has blocked their vehicle in and they can't leave. As soon as the owner comes out to move his car, a group of guys start to act. They assume, and for good reason, that the person is carrying the key to his car. You can turn ordinary matches into waterproof ones. Apply a thin coat of nail polish to the matches and let it dry. Once they're ready, they'll stay dry enough to start a fire, even if you drop the matches in the water. If you get lost somewhere during the winter and need a drink, then don't eat snow. It has much more air than water, so you won't even feel much more hydrated. Your body also wastes a lot of energy trying to eat it. Even worse, you might lower your body temperature and could even get sick. If you find yourself face-to-face with a coyote or a wolf, don't turn your back. Slowly retreat while facing the animal. This might only work for a single animal, though. If you meet a pack, then the most important thing is to make sure that they don't surround you. Back away towards a tree and press your back against it. Then choose the right moment and climb it as quickly as possible. Several layers of clothing will warm you better than one warm fur coat or down jacket. Air will be trapped between the clothing layers, insulating you and keeping your body warm. If you get lost in the woods, always try to sleep a little above the ground. You can lay on a layer of branches and leaves as a makeshift bed, or stretch a hammock out between some trees. At night, the temperature drops and the ground becomes cold. Even if you build a fire, it could go out while you sleep, and the ground will be sapping your body heat. You're in a boat in the middle of the sea, no food, no fishing net, and you're hungry. 
It was supposed to be only a three-hour tour. Well, guess what? You can catch fish with the help of shoelaces and any object – phone, watch, or keys. The shadow cast by the boat in the sea can attract fish, and a reflective object can work as bait. Tie your keys to your shoelaces and use them as a fishing rod. Even if a fish doesn't bite, activities like this are a good way to maintain a healthy mind on the open sea. A short meditation can save you from a panic attack. You need to focus on your breathing and try to slow it down. Your brain will quickly calm down and turn its focus away from the panic. Oxygen masks in airplanes work on the same principle. When you control your breathing, your attention is redirected away from whatever bad thing is happening. You can make a torch out of a log. Put a small log vertically, make a deep star-shaped cut on the top, put dry grass leaves and sticks inside. Once you're done, set fire to the log and watch it burn for up to 3 hours. This should work the same regardless of the size and type of wood. Now, if you meet an angry grizzly bear, never try to run away because the bear can easily outrun you. Instead, lie down and don't move. Grizzlies only usually attack when they see a threat, so they'll often leave you alone if you show them that you won't cause them any problems. This only works with grizzly bears, though. If a confrontation is unavoidable, back away slowly and use bear spray. If you don't have any, pepper spray will work similarly and should disorient the bear and scare it away. Or not. Don't eat berries or mushrooms in the forest if you don't know exactly what they are. They could be poisonous. If you have no other option, eat the inner bark of maples, birches, and pines to fill your stomach. Use a knife to cut away the rough outer bark and get to the softer white stuff. You can boil it to make it even softer, or cook it over an open fire to make a crunchy snack. And if you're really starving, you can look for ants. They might not be the most appetizing, but they're pretty nutritious. If you don't have a watch, you can use your fingers to find out how much time is left until sunset. Raise your hand so the inside of your palm is facing you. Your fingers should be between the sun and the horizon line. See how many fingers can fit in this space. The thickness of one finger equals about 15 minutes, so you can calculate the time left before sunset. If you're lost and need to build a fire to attract attention, throw in a lot of pine, cedar branches, cones, and any unnecessary rubber objects. Your fire will emit more black smoke, which makes it visible from afar. If you have no water in the desert but have some food, try to avoid eating for as long as you can. The more you eat, the more thirsty you'll get. The body needs liquid to digest food, so it'll use up what little you have. A person can live much longer without food than without water, so don't be afraid to stay hungry. Hey, you found a huge puddle of dirty water in the forest. If you're desperate for a drink, you can fill your bottle and filter it into drinking water. To clean it, make a rope of gauze or clothing. Put one end into the dirty bottle and the other one into the empty one. Before long, the clean water will flow into the empty bottle through the rope while the impurities are left behind. Before hiking, replace your regular shoelaces with paracord shoelaces. If you don't have enough rope, these laces can give you a few extra feet in a pinch. If you're lost in the forest and have nothing to warm you, then take dry leaves and grass from the ground and put it between two layers of clothing. This will help you stay warm for a long time. When you're lost in the desert, try to move as little as possible during the day. Find a shadow or create it from improvised materials and sit in the shade until dark. At night, you'll spend much less energy and use up less fluid while you walk. This will help you to avoid the risk of a heat stroke. If you fall through some ice, don't try to get out like you would in a pool. If you put your hands on the ice and try to push yourself out with your arms, it could crack and make you fall back into the water. You need to stretch your arms parallel to the ice surface and stretch your legs way back so they float in the water. In this horizontal position, start waving your legs as if you're swimming. Move your arms carefully without putting too much weight on the ice, and you should be able to escape. If you need to build a fire while it's too windy, here's what to do. Dig two holes next to each other and create a small underground tunnel between them. Make a fire in one of the pits. 
the wind can't extinguish it, and the fire gets its air through the second pit. This method is also useful if you need to build a fire without drawing attention. In the dark, this kind of fire won't be visible. Don't throw away or pop bubble wrap. Take it on a hike with you. It will protect you from the cold better than even a thick blanket would. Those tiny air bubbles are perfect insulation. Just put it in between layers of clothing, and it'll stop any warmth from escaping. The plastic it's made of is also waterproof, so it can stop you from getting wet, too. Swimming in the sea not far from the shore, you can easily get swept up in rip currents. If this happens, the most important thing to remember is not to swim against the current. This will only waste your strength and sap your energy, and you're unlikely to ever overpower an ocean current. Instead, try to swim sideways along the shore. Sooner or later, you should get out of the current, and then you can safely swim to the beach. If you're stuck in a falling elevator, don't try to jump at the moment of collision. Don't take a sitting position or stand either. You need to lie on the floor, facing the ceiling. Spread your legs as wide as possible, cover your face with one hand, and put the other hand behind your head for protection. You reduce the pressure on your body in this position when you fall. Ooh, you're lost! A rescue helicopter flies over the forest, but you don't have a flare and don't have time to build a fire. Use a small mirror or phone screen to reflect the sunlight. Aim the light beam towards the helicopter. Rescuers should notice the glare and fly over to save you. You park your car in a dark alley, lock it, and leave it for just a couple of minutes to go grab a coffee. When you come back, your beloved vehicle is no longer there. A siren sounds. Oh wait, that was the alarm. Phew! Luckily, that was all just a dream, and you can help it to never come true. First of all, you can install a steering wheel lock in your car. It can either be a long metal rod stretched over the steering wheel or a chain lock connected to the seatbelt buckle. Both options are good to slow down the bad guys that might break into your vehicle. But don't make it 100% thief-proof. The thieves can just cut the steering wheel or even the lock, so you need to add some extra layers of protection to be sure. Criminals like to use gadgets that catch signals and help them steal cars without a key. For example, if the car is parked in a garage of a private house or under the windows of a multi-story building, the keys are accessible through the radio device. Thieves can easily intercept the signal, and the owners of the car won't notice anything. To protect your keys from relay attacks when they're stored at home, use something metallic. You can simply wrap the keys in foil to block the radio signals or keep them in a safe metal box. Park in areas that are well lit and have security cameras. Building entrances and parking lots are your best choice. An isolated garage isn't always the best idea because it could put you personally at risk. So if you do park in one of those, stay close to the attendant or where security cameras can see you. Keep the wheels turned towards the curb whenever you park. It will make it way harder for thieves to try to tow the auto with a tow truck. To steal a car, a criminal will have to make some extra maneuvers. It takes time and effort and can demotivate the bad guys. In many cases, it's not your car the bad guys are after. It's that shiny new laptop you dropped in the front seat or your designer purse that looks like it's stuffed with valuables. Things like that are hard to resist and often lead to a break-in. So take an extra moment to hide your belongings in the trunk and your vehicle will be less tempting for criminals. Don't just jump out of the car, even if it's literally for a moment to buy something. If you need to get out, always stop the engine first, close the windows, and lock the doors. Storing your vehicle registration in the car is a good way to make the lives of thieves easier. They can present it to police officers in case they get pulled over. Your insurance information and VIN can help them get new keys to unlock the car no problem. If you aren't the only person using the car, find some secret place to hide the registration and only tell the people you trust 100% about it. You can also take a photo of your title registration and insurance information and store them on your smartphone. 
Another option is to make copies of those important docs and keep them with you. Mark your windshields, windows, and mirrors with a VIN number, which is the identification number of the vehicle. This service won't cost you a lot, but will demotivate the bad guys. They'll have to spend money to change the marked glass, and they will think twice if they want to invest in your vehicle. You can also play spy and leave marks on different parts of the car with an invisible pen or cover it in micro dots with your ID details. This won't stop thieves, but it will make it easier to track the vehicle if it gets stolen. If you know that you'll have to leave the car somewhere new and you don't feel like it's a safe place, hide an old switched on phone or tablet in it. Make sure you have a way to track it. Then, the Find My Phone feature will help you locate the phone and the car in a matter of seconds. You can either get a cheap data plan for real-time tracking or rely on GPS. It should work even without a SIM card. Protect your side mirrors from thieves with special covers. You can find models that come with locks made from anti-cut materials. The cover will also protect your side mirrors from scratches and scruffs and extend their lifespan. Plus, you can go creative and choose covers with your favorite team's logo or something else that's important to you. Not a bad idea to customize your vehicle on a budget, right? Car thieves use different schemes to distract your attention. A piece of paper stuck to the rear view window, a plastic bottle over the wheel, or a shirt on the trunk of your car. These and other small things will likely get you out of the car. The bad guys can also pretend to be nice and helpful and to tell you to pull over because there's something under your car. The idea here is, again, to get you out of your car and let them steal it. So instead of going out, close the windows, lock the car doors, and don't go out if there's someone suspicious hanging around. Criminals aren't the only bad guys who can do your vehicle harm. Harsh winter weather can be a problem too. If you don't want to find your wipers stuck to the windshield and scrape them off every morning, leave them up when you're not driving. You probably heard it's a bad idea because it ruins the arm's spring and can tempt someone to steal your wipers. Don't worry, the springs don't lose their elasticity and there aren't really many people who are after your wiper blades. In case you forget to put the wipers up and find them safely stuck to your windshield, try running the AC. Cold air will defrost the windows just like warm air. It works by dehumidifying the air. If your lock is frozen and you can't get inside your own car, treat it with some hand sanitizer. That substance can melt the ice without a problem. To prevent your windshield from getting frosty, Mix three parts vinegar and one part water and spray that solution on the windows overnight. It'll save you some scraping time in the morning. Always keep your gas tank more than half full in cold weather. Moist air will be happy to fill any empty space above the fuel in your tank. And that air will condense to water in the cold. Water is denser than gasoline. So, it settles at the bottom of your tank. When enough of it accumulates, it'll go through the fuel line to the engine, and that's not really good. To protect your favorite car from rust, wash your vehicle regularly. Something as simple as that can be the difference because dirt damages the protective layer of clear coat and paint and makes it easier for rust to sneak in. Don't forget to wash the undercarriage of the car and the wheel wells. Make sure the car paint isn't chipping or peeling. You need that layer to protect your vehicle from the elements. In the cold season, salt from the road can also cause some rust spots. To avoid that, you should at least rinse the car every week, even in the winter. And don't forget to wax it at least twice a year. That's another good way to keep your paint looking good as new and protect it from UV rays. One more thing is to keep the inside of the car clean. If you spill something inside, always mop up the liquid. You don't want it to seep further and hit the metal parts. This is exactly how rust forms. If you're struggling with opening a container or a jar, 
Don't exert yourself too much. Just run the lid under hot water for half a minute and then dry it for a better grip and see how it magically opens. If you're following a recipe that calls for both garlic and onions, add onions first. When you see they're almost translucent, that's the perfect moment to add garlic. Garlic will cook faster than onions, so if you put both of these products in a pan at the same time, the garlic will burn and your meal won't taste as good. You're a fan of avocados? Here's how you can easily check if one is ripe or not. Just take a look at its tail. If you can pull it out without any difficulties, the avocado is good to eat. If you can't do it easily, better leave it for a couple of days since it's not ripe yet. Here's how you can tell if an egg is fresh or not. Break it and check the yolk. If you can see that it has a clear circle of white surrounding it and is located in the middle, you have a fresh egg. The yolk is supposed to be voluminous too. If it's flat, it's better not to eat the egg. If you see that the white part doesn't have clear borders and your egg spreads around, the chances are it's spoiled. To tell the quality of your eggs, put a raw one while it's still in the shell into a bowl of water. If the egg remains on the bottom, you're good to go. If one of its sides comes closer to the water surface, your egg is not fresh, but you can still eat it. But if it floats, it's not fresh enough to consume. Brushing your teeth in the morning and before you go to bed doesn't have to be the same process. It's important to brush your teeth in the morning, but more so that you have fresh breath. But in the evening, you should brush your teeth more thoroughly because that's how you can prevent bacteria from breeding and protect your gums and teeth. Speaking of bad breath, want to know a good trick to fight it in no time? Cucumber slices. If you don't have a mint within reach, simply eat a slice of cucumber to fix this problem. When you buy natural peanut butter, store it upside down. That way, it won't separate into solids and oils as much. And you'll bring the oils to the top, which is why the peanut butter will be easier to mix. When you put something down for a while, comment it out loud. For example, I put my phone on the floor right next to my bed. When you do this, you engage multiple parts of your brain, including the language centers, and create a more vivid memory. That way, you'll be less likely to forget about it. You can do the same when you, for example, blow out a candle, unplug your hair straightener, turn off your stove burners, or take your keys, wallet, and other stuff when you leave the house. You'll get rid of many of those moments of doubt that make you wonder if you really did those things. If you visit your friend and bring along something you don't want to forget when you leave, just put it next to your car keys. That's something you definitely can't leave without. If it's hard for you to make a decision, flip a coin. It's not really about letting it decide for you, but while you're waiting to see the result, your mind will automatically start thinking about the outcome you really want, but perhaps can't admit out loud. You're in the supermarket and want to know if the pumpkin you're holding is good or not. Just knock on it. Does it sound as if it's empty inside? That's a good sign. Meanwhile, on the outside, it should be solid. Sometimes we dispose of foods that are still good to consume, like yogurt that's become layered. You know that layer of liquid on the top? That's just whey that contains nutrients. Stir your yogurt to make it smooth because it's still good to eat. When you're buying chicken, check if there's liquid around it. It's better when it doesn't have it. For instance, if you take some frozen chicken out of the freezer and see a lot of ice around the piece, it's better not to eat it. You're moving into a new apartment or house? Set up your bedroom first. Buy a bed before anything else. When you're exhausted after carrying your stuff around and cleaning the whole day, you'll just want to have a comfortable place to rest. Here's a trick that will help you figure out if your coconut oil is adulterated. Leave it in the fridge for half an hour. Coconut oil becomes solid at low temperatures. Adulterant oils detach and you can see them as a separate layer. When you want to check if an onion has some mold, just take a look at what's under the first layer of peel. Do you see stains that look as if the peel has faded? Mold. Better avoid buying this vegetable. Or make sure to remove all that mold if you've already got it. You can determine whether a lemon is ripe or not by eye. If its skin is smooth and has a rich yellow color, it's ripe. A greenish tint, as well as a pale yellow color, tells you it's ready to be used yet. This one's for coffee lovers. If you really want to enjoy your overall coffee experience, it's way better to buy beans and grind them yourself. 
or ask if a salesperson can do it in the store when you buy your coffee. That's the best way to make sure that the product is really made without any extra additions that can be present in a regular ground coffee. If you're looking for a simple way to separate yolks from egg whites, try this. Take a clean and empty plastic water bottle, crack an egg into a bowl, squeeze the bottle over the yolk, and slowly release it. This way, you'll create a vacuum which will make the yolk slide into the bottle. Ta-da! It's separated from the white, just like that. Let's say you lost an earring or some other small item in the house. A vacuum cleaner will help. Just don't forget to pop a stocking over its head. This way, the item won't get lost in the dust and dirt inside the vax bag. You want to take your favorite lotion with you on a trip, but it takes up too much space? Try using a contact lens case. It doesn't need a lot of space, and it's a perfect solution for short trips. A hair straightener is a surprisingly good tool when it comes to ironing collars, especially if you're not a fan of regular ironing. When you want to check if your batteries are good or bad, just drop them on the table from approximately 6 inches. If they bounce once and fall right over, they're good to go. If they bounce around more than that, they're either done or on the way out. If your razor doesn't have a plastic cap, just use a binder clip to cover it and to protect the rest of your stuff if you're packing it with some sensitive items or materials. Nail polish is a simple yet effective way to differentiate your keys, especially if they're all similar. Finally, you don't have to try each of them before getting to the right one. When you're reheating leftovers in a microwave, space out a circle in the middle of your dish. This way, your food will heat up more evenly. Straw is a cool tool to remove strawberry stems. Don't you think? A muffin tin definitely comes in handy when you want to serve different condiments for your barbecue. Plus, it will save you some time with the dishes later. Here's how you can protect your bank card from potential fraudsters. Use a marker and cover the last four digits. You can also use a sticker that's easy to remove and place it over the security code. Have you had a house guest that didn't use a coaster? Get a hairdryer and hold it a couple of inches away from the stain. Blow it on medium heat for a couple of minutes to evaporate the watermark. If a faded ring remains, mix equal amounts of vinegar and olive oil in a bowl. Wipe it onto the marked area and rub it in until the stain disappears. Then wipe it off. Don't waste time scrubbing the burnt stains off the bottom of a pan. Instead, fill it with water and add three tablespoons of salt. Let it sit overnight as the salt dissolves the burnt marks. And in the morning, pour the water out of the pan. This way, it will be much easier to scrub all that grease off. Picture this. You're on vacation and your shirt has become all crinkled inside the luggage. You need it tonight, but the hotel doesn't have an iron. Don't panic. Hang the shirt up in the bathroom. And while you relax in a hot shower, the heat and moisture will unwrinkle your shirt. It won't be perfect, but it will get much better without any effort. The football is on, and it turns out you've run out of standard batteries. You can use a smaller battery instead that easily fits inside. Now take some aluminum foil and crunch it up. Fit it into the gap on the negative or flat end of the battery. All done! You can turn on the TV now. Once your flip-flops crack and the plug easily slips out of the hole, it's normally a sign that you need a new pair. But there's a way to extend their mileage. Push the plug back through the hole, then take a bread clip and attach it to the end. The clip will provide enough support for the plug to remain in place. You've received a package and the receipt is taped on. You've managed to detach it from the box. But how to separate the tape without ripping the paper? Hold both ends of the tape apart, and by pulling it slowly, the tape stretches and separates itself from the paper without tearing it apart. Ziploc bags are perfect to keep things dry, but it would be great if they were larger. Take two and turn one of them inside out. They can now connect and work as one large bag, big enough to protect a keyboard. There's no need to carry your keys in your hand when you go for a jog. Instead, put them inside your pocket, take a rubber band, then tie it around the pocket from the inside. This stops the keys from falling out. You've broken your key in the door. It's stuck. Great. Arranging for a locksmith could cost up to $100, but for a cheaper and quicker option, try using a hot glue stick. Heat the end with a lighter, and once it's warm enough to melt, push the glue into the keyhole. The melted glue will enter the available space covering part of the key. Once it cools, it compresses and gains a strong hold of the key's end. Now, 
just pull it out. If you need to siphon liquid through a hose and want to avoid using your mouth, put one end in the liquid and hold the other upwards with your thumb closing the top. Now shake up and down. This jiggle motion pushes liquid upwards, a little each time. And once it reaches the top, lower the exit point and let gravity do the rest. You've left your keys locked inside the car. It's an older model with a roll-down window. You could get the coat hanger and begin the long process of finding the lock. Or use duct tape. Make about 20 two-foot-long strands. Stick them onto the window, allowing enough room for the tape to grab onto at the bottom. Then with a friend, take the ends of the tape, holding them together, and pull downwards. The force will allow the window to lower enough that you can unlock the door. While drilling long screws into hardwood, your old drill might not have enough power, leaving them only halfway in. Before the drill gives up, get a block of wax and scrape the edges of the screws with it. The wax works like a lubricant, melting as it gets warm and providing easy entry for the screw. You're out camping, but you didn't bring anything to light the barbecue. Take a small plastic bag that won't leak, fill it up with water and close it tight, making a round bubble. Hold it over where you want to catch the light from the sun. The bag of water will work like a magnifying glass, starting up the barbecue, just as long as it's a sunny day. Missing a corkscrew or a cork breaking halfway? By using a stove lighter, heat the top of the bottle. The heat slightly expands the glass, and this forces the cork out the top. You've super glued your fingers again. Take some salt and pour it on top of your stuck fingers. Put your fingers into the water and slowly rub. The mixture will dissolve the glue and release you in no time. While hanging up a painting, it can be impossible to find that stubborn nail. Place a fork upside down and insert it so the nail is in between the middle fork teeth. The fork has provided a long arm that's separated from the wall, making it easier to slip the string of the painting over the nail. Once it's perfectly balanced, simply remove the fork. You need to put a cake into a container, but taking it out again later by lifting it up from the inside might ruin the cake. Put the lid upside down and place the cake on the lid. The base of the container is now the lid, making it much easier to access slice by slice. Pour out water more efficiently from large jugs and bottles by swirling. This will make the liquid inside spin, creating a vortex. The vortex allows for the air to flow back into the bottle as the water pours out, much faster than the glugging alternative. There's an easier and less messy way to remove eggshells from a boiled egg. Once fully boiled, crack the shell on both ends by tapping them. On one end, pinch off the shell. Use the opened end to blow with your mouth. The force of air will push the flesh and expand the eggshell, forcing out the egg undamaged. When the hinges of your laptop break, repairing them can cost up to $300. A far cheaper fix is to buy a picture frame and tape it to the back of the screen. You've dropped a small piece of jewelry on the floor, seemingly impossible to find. Take a stocking and place it over the end of the vacuum hose. Give the area a good vacuum and check the end periodically. You will eventually find it sitting at the end. You've drilled a hole in the wall, but the drill hole is now too wide. Remove the screw and find an object that is slightly shorter and thinner. Pieces of plastic, small wires, paper clips, or even toothpicks are perfect. Place whichever item you find inside the hole. It's filled the gap enough so the screw will now re-enter securely. Taking the trash out can put you in a gross scenario of getting bin juice on you. A great way to avoid this is by placing old papers at the bottom of the bag. Now, not only does it absorb all the liquids from the food and other sources, but also helps prevent bad smells from forming within a bin. Nobody likes mosquitoes, and pesticides are pricey. A cheap alternative is to take a plastic bottle and cut the top part off from the bottom of the funnel. After removing it, turn it upside down and put it inside the bottle. Mix two cups of warm water with two tablespoons of sugar. The mosquitoes will be attracted to the formula inside and become trapped. Now just sit back and relax without getting bitten. Yep, moving objects through a door when it keeps closing is super annoying. So instead, tie a rubber band around the handle on each side of the door so that it crosses over the latch. The latch then won't be able to pop out, and the door won't lock shut. To check whether your bed sheets are fully dried, take a mirror and place it underneath. 
leave it there for around 5 minutes, and if it steams up, it means the sheets are still damp. A damp bed can be a breeding ground for mold and other nasty fungi. You can paint the end of your keys with different colored nail polish so that you can easily identify which key is which. In order to pour the perfect amount of oil or salad dressing, poke holes in the foil seal rather than removing it completely. This prevents a big amount rushing out quickly. To prevent band-aids from slipping off your finger, cut a line on either side. This will create four smaller sticky strips rather than one large one, and it will be much easier to secure. If you enter a public restroom and see a red solo cup someone put under the seat, better choose another booth. It means there's no toilet paper in this one. The red cup is a frequent replacement for a toilet paper hub, which is also put under the seat for the same reason. Speaking of restrooms, almost any public toilet has a large gap between the floor and the door. The reason for such a zero-privacy thing is to actually minimize the level of privacy and comfort so that people won't stay there long and there'd be no lines. It's also to clean and safer if some emergency occurs. Forgot to put your drink in the fridge? Wrap a wet paper towel around it and put it in the freezer. In just 15 minutes, your drink will be ice cold. Instead of filling your purse or wallet with store loyalty cards, you can take a photo of them. Just take one snap of the barcode, as well as a picture of the front so you know which card it is. Then, when you visit the store, just scan the barcode on your phone to collect your points. If you're using your phone to watch something and are tired of propping it up and having it fall back down, try using your sunglasses. Simply place them upside down and use the parts that go around your ears to hold the phone in place. Now, if you don't have the correct size coin to put in your shopping cart next time you go to the supermarket, you can use your key instead. If you have a key with a rounded end, you can insert that where the coin would go and the cart should unlock. If you're struggling to get your taco shells to stay in place, use a muffin tray. Flip the tray upside down, spray it with oil, and place your tortillas in the gap. Cook them for around 10 minutes at 700 degrees Fahrenheit for the perfect crispy taco shell. You can use a water bottle to separate egg yolks. Hold the bottle over the yolk and squeeze it to suck the yolk up. Drop it into a separate bowl and you're good to go. Next time you're struggling to clean your ceiling fan, use a pillowcase. Slide the pillowcase over each blade to wipe off the dust. This way, excess dust is caught inside the pillowcase and won't rain down on you. To properly clean your blender, fill it with soap and hot water. Switch it on for around 10 seconds and let the swirling water do the hard work. Then just rinse it off and it's clean. Put down a strip of masking tape before nailing into plaster walls. The tape should stop the plaster from flaking or spreading dust all over the floor. If your shoes smell bad, put a few dry tea bags into the shoe. The tea bags will absorb the smell. Try using toothpaste to remove small scratches on furniture. Rub a peanut-sized amount on the scratch in a circular motion until the scratch buffs out. Then wipe it with a damp cloth and voila! Drill a couple of small holes in the bottom of your trash can to stop the bag getting stuck when you pull it out. The holes stop the vacuum-like effect that keeps the bag pinned down. You can easily remove the sticky residue from jars using cooking oil. Soak a cotton pad in some oil, then rub it on the sticky area. Allow it to sit for a few minutes, then it should wipe away easily. Now, you can use hair conditioner to make that new wool sweater less itchy. Just soak it in lukewarm water with a couple of tablespoons of conditioner and leave it for 15 minutes. Then, just dry it and your sweater will be much softer. An odor on your fingers can be removed with some minty toothpaste. Rub them together with toothpaste, then rinse them clean. It'll help get rid of the odor and act as a light scrub, too. Now, before you throw out those old sneakers, Arm yourself with an old toothbrush and a little toothpaste. Work the paste into the dirty spots and leave it for at least 10 minutes. Wipe it off with a damp cloth and repeat if it didn't do it right the first time. Be careful with color toothpaste, it may leave stains. 
Washing your clothes on a low heat, or even better, a cold wash, will make them last twice as long. Drying them on the line, if possible, will also make the material last longer than if you used a dryer. Metal zippers are very durable, but they'll snag more than other kinds of zippers. Just gently rub a bar of soap over the teeth of both sides of the zipper. The residue will help lubricate it, making it easier to slide open and closed. When you can't squeeze any more toothpaste out of your tube, just cut the end off. This will allow you to get what's left inside onto your toothbrush in a pinch. If there's enough for more than one use, place it in a plastic bag for later. Freezing candles before use can make them burn a lot slower. This will cool the wax right down and extend its melting time. A pack of cotton pads has those strings on it so that we can hang it on some hook or holder. And no, there's no need to untighten and tighten the pack again. Look at the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear along it, and now you're good to pull out a cotton pad. If you've ever tasted a Nintendo cartridge, you'll confirm that, yes, they taste revolting, leaving a sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, one of the most disgusting flavors known. Actually, this taste is kind of a hidden function. It prevents people from swallowing those cartridges. Headrests in a car are about comfort, and detachable headrests are about safety. If you pull the headrest out of the seat, you'll see two bars, which are quite sturdy. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. Rough edges on the dimes aren't just about design. The coins used to be made of precious metals to show their real value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaven coins with the same value, and melt the edges to new coins. To avoid it, minters added that pattern so people could tell if someone cut that coin before. That black grate on a microwave isn't just some fancy decoration. It's called a Faraday shield, and it prevents the rays from escaping the microwave. It also speeds up the heating, so you could enjoy yesterday's leftovers faster. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped, too, before you pour the gas. The air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. See you Saturday! You hang up and realize you have two days before the main family get-together of the year. Your shopping list is ready, so you head to the largest supermarket in town. You follow the list to the letter, grabbing everything you need as fast as possible. The cart is full of fruit, vegetables, dairy, meat, fish, bread. Well done, you! One hour later, you get back home and proudly hand in the shopping bags to your grandma. She takes out the items one by one and frowns more and more at each of them. Turns out the fish and meat you picked aren't fresh at all, and those bananas and greens won't make it till Saturday either. Grandma says she'll save the day. You make a good snack to not go shopping hungry. Now you won't buy the stuff you don't need. Then you get in the car together to do it all over again. Smart shopping means cruising the perimeter of the store where you can find all the fresh and healthy stuff. Fruits, vegetables, dairy, meat, and fish. They normally reserve the center aisles for junk food. So you decide to skip them all together. Your first stop is the produce section. Grandma says you should spend the most time here. And it's a good thing you arrived before lunch. Most grocers get fresh produce when they just open, or later in the evening before they close. You reach out for packaged tomatoes, but Grand stops you. Prepackaged fruit and vegetables are usually more expensive. Plus, they don't let you check each item. A good ripe tomato can weigh double as much as an unripe one. It should have smooth and firm skin, and smell like a tomato. No! Don't put that poor bruise thing into your cart! Bruises on produce are a perfect breeding ground for bacteria. Try to find firm cucumbers that have no blemishes or soft spots. The best ones are dark green. If you see yellow spots, it means the thing is overly ripe and will likely taste odd. The same goes for peppers. They must be of intense color with no stains. Now turn it upside down and count the bumps. Four bumps means fewer seeds and better taste. Two to three bumps mean bitter taste. The stem of a fresh pepper is always green, firm, and crispy. Take these potatoes with sprouts out of your cart right now. 
Go for the firm and smooth ones, without the wrinkled skin, soft dark spots, or cuts. Pick only green lettuce with no holes or brown edges. The brighter its shade of green, the better. Moving on to fruits and berries, Gran explains that a ripe watermelon will come with a dry brown stem. This one with a dark yellow must have been resting on the ground long enough to get sweet. The same's true for melons. The ones with a yellowish bark is sweeter, as it had received enough sunlight by the time they picked it. Check out the stem of the bunch before taking those bananas home. The stem must be green to light yellow and not turning brown. Only take single bananas if you want to eat them right away. They survive longer in clusters. Never judge a mango by its color. Instead, gently squeeze it. A ripe mango will give in a bit, and it will also have a fruity aroma at the stem end. Smaller fruit is normally sweeter, but that rule doesn't work for strawberries. Different sorts come in different sizes, so bigger ones can be yummy too. Their ripening ends once they've been picked up, so go for bright red berries with fresh green leaves. Those would look dry and wilt if they had picked the berries a long time ago. That lemon won't give you much juice. It's pale, which means it's an older one. This firm, unblemished one with smooth skin will be way better. It also feels heavier, and that's a good sign as well. You're shopping for a big event, but otherwise, you'd never buy too much produce at a time. If it's fresh and organic, it won't naturally last too long. And always opt for fruits and veggies that are in season. They'll be less expensive and of better quality. Next up, honey. This one looks odd to you as it has those crystals at the bottom of the jar. But Grandma explains it's a sign of freshness. It's normal for honey to crystallize when the temperature drops. It's also a good sign it looks opaque. It means it's more natural and healthy and not pasteurized. You check the list and realize you still need some bread. You already know the best option is the whole grain kind. You pick it up and study the label. Made with whole grains won't do. This one that says whole wheat flour is good. The fewer ingredients, the better. If you can't pronounce the name of the additive, you don't want it in your bread. It shouldn't have artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. You lightly press on the bread you just chose. Bingo! It goes back to its original shape, which means it's high quality. If you see your finger mark on it, it could have been previously frozen, or the baking process went wrong. You move towards the canned food section, and Gran jumps in your way. She's sure canned foods are bad for your health, as they contain a huge amount of sodium. You convince her to at least study the labels. You should always pick canned foods that don't have too much salt or sugar in them. The ones preserved in water or their own juice are the healthiest, as they have fewer artificial ingredients in them. You find some tuna packed in olive oil. The package is perfectly closed, so it's all good. You know you should never take a rusty can. It can be dangerous. Okay, looks like you've got everything you need, except for meat and dairy. You know you should always grab those last. They can spoil without a fridge if shopping gets too long. You make some room in your shopping cart to protect your fruit from raw meat juice, just in case. Red meat should be of dark color. Purple, red, and brown are all good. Pork should be the shade of light blushing pink. It should smell good. It can't be pungent in any way. If you see many fibers, it must be some tough meat with a strong flavor. Beef tenderloin won't have any grains because it's super tender. White flecks and streaks of fat throughout the muscle are another sign it's juicy and tender. If you aren't planning to cook meat straight away, pick the one with the latest best before a date. You can still eat it safely after that date, but it tastes better before it. Dirty marks within the packaging are a red flag. Someone must have handled it with dirty hands. If the chicken you're about to buy has skin, it should be paler than the flesh, not yellow or light brown. The edges mustn't look dry. The cuts must be smooth and uniformly sized. If it's not butchered well, there might be small joints and bones in your lunch. Any chicken that has been in the container for more than two days should better stay on the shelf and not in your cart. Gran picks up a fish and stares it in the eye. She explains a good fish will have protruding ones with shiny black pupils. The skin of fresh fish should be silky, not sticky or dull. Squeeze the fillet. If there's a trace of your finger mark on it, it's no good. The final stop of the day: dairy products. You should reach for the back of the shelf to find the ones with the most distant expiration date. 
The same rule works for frozen foods, packaged foods, and eggs. Stalkers locate the newer ones behind the older items. Grandma recommends choosing pasteurized milk. No raw products will land in your cart today. When milk goes through pasteurization, they heat it up to fight off disease-causing bacteria. It doesn't take away the nutritional value of the product, so no worries about that. When picking the best yogurt, pay attention to the label. The more words you see on it, the better. Three basic ingredients are enough to make it work. The rest should be preservatives and sugar you don't need. Live and active cultures is something you want to see on the ingredients list. Don't forget to get some cheese. Not this one, though. The soft kinds like ricotta, cream cheese, goat cheese, or shredded cheese shouldn't have any mold on them. It can penetrate inside easily. Some mold is fine on hard cheeses. You can carefully cut the area around it and still eat it. Yay! You're done with shopping. Time to go home and cook. Put oil absorbent paper on a clean, smooth surface. Then squeeze your toothpaste evenly on the paper blob by blob. Sprinkle it with baking soda. And when the toothpaste pieces solidify, put them in a small portable box or bottle. When you need to brush your teeth in the wild, just take one blob, put it in your mouth, and use your toothbrush as usual. If your condiment collection takes up too much space in your picnic basket, use some straws to create mini versions of your favorite spices. Cut one third of a straw, pinch one edge with forceps, and melt it on fire to seal the edges together. Then, use a kitchen funnel to pour the spices into this mini bottle and seal the second edge using the same technique. Sign the name of the spice and place it in a small box. When your shoes get wet in the wild, find some stones of a suitable size. Put the stones in a pot with water and boil them. Place the heated stones carefully inside your shoes. You can use kitchen tongs or a ladle to carry the stones. The shoes will soon get dry. If you don't want to boil the stones, here's another way. Take a plastic bottle, pour hot water inside and wrap the bottle with toilet paper. Then place the bottle in your shoe and wait for 30 minutes. It should be enough to make them crispy and comfortable. If you're eating soup in the wild, you can cut an emergency spoon out of a plastic bottle. Cut out the shape of a spoon with a knife in the place where the walls of the bottle meet the bottom. And don't forget to add a comfortable handle. Garlic and onions can be easily peeled with a metal bottle cap. Speaking of metal caps, you can open a bottle with one of those using your wedding band, metal spoon, or another bottle. Went fishing but forgot your knife at home? Use a carrot to peel the fish. Cut the carrot at an angle and rub the fish scales with one half of the carrot. The scales will easily come off. Punch holes in a cork of a plastic bottle and screw it tight. Then cut off the top of the bottle and turn it upside down. Place a rolled napkin or toilet paper in the neck of the bottle. Then put some coal, grass, and stones and pour turbid water into this handmade filter. Later, you can boil this filtered water and drink it if you get thirsty in the wild. Melt a bar of soap and draw it up into a syringe. Squeeze the soap into an empty pill pack and seal the template with tin foil. Use one of the tiny soaps to wash your hands anytime. To make your grilled patties juicier, press a groove in the middle of the patty and put ice on it. Wait for the ice to melt and fry as usual. You can make a camping washing machine using an ordinary bucket with a lid. Cut a small hole in the middle of the lid and insert a plunger handle into it. Pour the laundry detergent into the bucket. Put in clothes and water, close the lid, and rinse the clothes with a plunger until the stains are removed. If you can't pick out gum stuck on your clothes, put a piece of ice on it, and the gum will tear off easily. You can also put your clothes in a freezer for a while and then tear off the gum. Detergent bottles are usually too big to take on a camping trip. Take a sheet of thin paper and spread the detergent evenly on the paper. Cut the paper into small square pieces and put them in a waterproof box. When you need to wash the dishes, just put one piece on a wet sponge. While walking in the woods, collect tree branches, about the width of a finger. Bring the branches home, wash and cut them into equal pieces. Put them in a bowl and glue the sticks together in the shape of the bowl, using hot melted glue. Your stylish handmade fruit tray is ready. If the lid of the tin just wouldn't open that easily, try this life hack. Wrap the lid with adhesive tape, then gently pull it open. If your kettle is full of scale, pour in some water and put a piece of lemon inside. 
Boil the water, then wash the kettle, and the scale will be gone. In case you get hungry in the wild without a fishing rod, try another way to catch some fish. Take a large empty plastic bottle, cut off the top part, and turn it upside down. Tie the two sides of the bottle mouth with a rope. Crush some instant noodles and put them inside the bottle. Throw the bottle into the river. This trap will surely attract fish. Make matches that will never get blown out in windy weather. Wrap the matches in napkins and dip them in melted wax. Wait for them to dry and voila, you have matches that won't go out. You can use a basic razor to crumble chocolate into your ice cream or coffee. Take an even number of jars and paint them your favorite color. Glue them to the surface of a wooden chopping board from both sides, and then put a rope on the side of the chopping board as the handle rope. Your brand new tableware storage box for outdoor camping is ready. Nitrogen in hair promotes nutrients. Put the hair you lose every day in a flower pot and your plants will grow stronger and healthier. Place several instant noodles in a baking dish. Add a thick layer of cheese. Sprinkle it with all the seasoning bags from the noodle packages. Then, pour ketchup and other toppings like pepperoni or mushrooms in the gaps between the noodles. Add some more cheese and bake your meal until the cheese melts. Super delicious noodles are ready. Instant noodles are also a great fire starter. Take clean disposable paper cups and use a needle to poke out decorative rows. Then, use a knife to cut a small cross at the bottom and put the cup on a lamp belt. Repeat this with other cups until your own unique lamp belt is ready. You can also paint the cups in your favorite color before placing them on the lamp belt. Egg packaging can be used to store sauces. Dip the root of the rose in honey, then insert the root in a potato and trim off the branches. Plant this potato in a pot. This is how you can grow your own roses in a pot. Brush your shoes with toothpaste and a toothbrush, and they will get as white as your teeth. Use a hula hoop and a bathroom curtain to organize a bathroom anywhere in the forest. Attach the curtain to a hula hoop with hooks and tie it to a tree with a string. You can also use this tip to build a temporary dressing room. If you don't want to take the entire package of tape on a hike, wrap the necessary amount around your lighter, and then just cut off a piece when you need it. If you need to move a heavy sofa, you can put banana peels under the legs of the sofa. Furniture will slide on the floor easily. After eating a meal from the lunchbox, a lot of oil stays on its surface. To make cleaning easier, squeeze some detergent into your lunchbox, put a piece of absorbent paper, add some water, cover the box and shake it back and forth, and then rinse it with water. The lunchbox will get clean immediately. If you urgently need slippers, but you have only two soda bottles on hand, squeeze them and stick your feet under the labels. Your stylish slippers are ready. You can use a jar to make a candlestick or a mini stove for cooking. Make one vertical cut in the jar and then make two horizontal cuts on the top and on the bottom. Open the two sides like doors and put a candle inside the jar. If you need to cook food, just put a bunch of small sticks inside the jar and light a fire. Then, put your pot on top of the jar, and don't forget to feed the fire with new sticks until the meal is ready. Put dry foliage under your sweater. It will help keep you warm. To make thicker matches for lighting a fire, wind five matches tightly in one bundle with a thread. Then, dip the matches in melted wax. Wait until the wax hardens and put the matches in a box. If the zipper on your backpack or tent doesn't slide well, and it's difficult for you to zip it, you can use wax. Take a candle and rub it along the entire length of the zipper. The first thing that can tell something about a person is the way they walk. Those who walk fast and confidently hold their head up. They're focused and great problem solvers. If they walk with their head held high, having shoulders back and chest forward, then they're sociable. These people like spending time with others and enjoy the appreciation. They're also easily bored and like the challenge. If a person walks with an average pace and looks relaxed, then they're, well, relaxed. They're calm and tend to focus more on others rather than on themselves. They're also easily influenced. Those who walk with a medium pace but in confident strides are very cooperative and good listeners. They're loyal and a bit dependent on others. 
those who walk slowly and keep their head lowered are likely to be introverted and shy. If they cross their arms, then they're probably vulnerable and like to be alone. So here's a trick. If you want to appear confident when you walk in somewhere, especially if it's an important business meeting, always check your body language. To always remember making sure of that, you can use a doorway technique. Use something, for example, a doorway as an anchor. Whenever you walk through a doorway, teach yourself to check your body language. Pay attention if you're walking straight, if you're keeping your head up, or other minor details. Do it every time you walk through any doorway. Later, the doorway will become a natural trigger for you, and you'll automatically correct your posture every time you walk through it. Okay, back to the clues. Pay attention to the way the person is dressed. You probably don't wear something that's not your style or vibe, and neither do other people. People who dress casually are easygoing, value comfort, and prefer to be themselves, not feeling the need to impress anyone. People who wear clothes with colorful patterns are creative and like to express themselves through what they wear. Those who wear designer clothes displaying the logos like to show off and show their status. People who wear their working clothes are workaholics who value themselves mostly through their job and achievements at work. Those who have official style and wear formal clothes are sophisticated and assertive. People who wear sports clothes are confident. Those who wear neutral colors are closed and don't like to draw attention to themselves, preferring to stay in shape. Even the choice of shoes can tell you something. In one study, people were shown photos of people's boots, and they had to describe the personality of the person to whom the pair of footwear belonged to. Surprisingly, the descriptions were pretty accurate. So, people who wear comfortable shoes are agreeable. People whose shoes are new or just in perfect condition are clingy and anxious. Angle boots lovers are pushy. If a person has a bag, pay attention to how they carry it. If it's in front of their body, kept close, then they're a cautious and shy person. Now, let's turn to the handshake. It's not just a social ritual, but also a way to get the first impression about the person. A dominant handshake is when the person flips their hand over yours with their palm facing down. This is a dominant person trying to show who's the boss here. They like to take control over others, don't like to take anyone's opinion into account, and might even be a bit pushy sometimes. A submissive handshake is the opposite position, where the person's palm is facing up and their hand is covered by yours. This means the person isn't confident, and you can easily dominate them if you wish. Another one is a floppy handshake, where the person doesn't really give your hand a shake. It's one-sided, and it appears like it's just you who give them one. This handshake means weakness and indifference. There's also a double hand handshake. It's when a person uses both their hands, usually placing the second hand on the back of the other person's hand. This type says the person accepts the other person's dominance, but invites them for discussion. It's typical for honest and open people who like to talk things through and have a conversation. However, if the second hand is placed not on the back of the opponent's hand, but on top of it, It's a way of self-defense and reveals the lack of trust. Another way to use the second hand is to touch the opponent. So these people give you a handshake, but also touch your back, forearm, or anything else with their free hand. This displays that the person needs company and lacks communications in their life. Now we're off to eye contact. While speaking to the person, pay attention to their eyes. People who keep eye contact are open. They're interested in what you're saying and are paying attention to you. Those who constantly break it are rather nervous and uncomfortable. Or they're just shy. Shy people can't keep eye contact for long because they consider it invasive. If the person blinks a lot, it means they're distressed. And if their eyes are squinted, they're suspicious of you and don't trust you much. Pay attention to how the person treats people who work in service, like restaurant and hotel staff, retail and food service. Service staff have to be nice to the customer, but the customer doesn't have to return the attitude. In this case, the customer is in the position of power. So pay attention how they behave when they have that power. Do they choose to be nice, or do they prefer to treat people poorly when they don't have the obligation to be good guys? Power reveals people's true personality. If a person appears to be nice with you, but they're rude with a waiter in a restaurant, they're not a person to be trusted. Overall, how polite the person is is also a good indicator of their identity. Yes, if a person knows and uses words like please and thank you, 
then they must be a good person who is considerate and empathetic and respects other people. And, well, if they're rude to others, especially to those who have a lower social status, then they're overprivileged and, well, simply rude. Interestingly, the way animals react to a person can also tell a lot about their personality. Animals don't judge anyone by their looks, their way of thinking, or education. So they're way harder to mess up than with people. Animals draw their opinions based on people's vibe, body language, and facial expressions, which are way harder to control. Some believe that animals just have some sixth sense, and they can smell if a person is good or not. So if animals like someone, then it must be a nice person. Pay attention to the person's reading preferences. People who enjoy classics are empathetic and like to get to know others profoundly. Fantasy books lovers are true daydreamers who like to escape reality and are sometimes out of this world. Historical fiction people are perfectionists who pay attention even to minor details. And horror readers are adventurous and always seeking some adrenaline. People who check their smartphones all the time are probably emotionally unstable. Checking the phone is a way for them to up their mood. People who argue all the time, even when there's no valid reason for that, are narcissistic and self-focused. However, if the person argues, but for a reason and carefully picks their arguments, it simply means that they like a good debate. If a person eats fast, it might mean they have a high level of anxiety, or they have theater tickets and are running late. Also, pay attention to where a person looks when they're drinking from a cup. Those who look inside the cup are idealistic and introspective people who constantly reflect on their feelings and emotions. People who look out of the cup are usually extroverted, carefree, and trusting, but they can be easily influenced. Some people close their eyes when they drink. This means they're either uncomfortable or just deep in their own thoughts. When people clink glasses, those whose glass is higher have a high self-esteem, and those who place their glasses lower think of themselves worse than they are. People who are highly intelligent tend to have a sloppy handwriting. So if you can't read a note from your colleague or a random person you just met, don't judge them too closely. You might have just made the acquaintance of a genius. Yeah, you're up. It's 2 a.m. and you can't sleep. Here we go again. Off you go to the sofa in an attempt to get drowsy enough to go back to bed. The clock's ticking, and it's already 5 a.m. Your eyes are tired, and yet you still can't sleep. Finally, an hour later, you head back to bed and finally drift off. Okay, let's fix that and make sure you get a good night's sleep. First, let's prepare your bedroom so it becomes the perfect sleep-inducing place. Your bed needs to be of a good quality, good enough that when you lay on it, you feel a sense of relaxation flow through your body. A good pillow is important too, to properly support your spine. There are different pillows, thick, thin, firm, soft. Try out a few and find out what's best for you. Lighting is important, so if your room still has a bit of light in it, even at midnight, it might be one of the reasons you can't sleep well. Go ahead and close those drapes shut. Oh look, you did that! And they're still letting light in. Ah, don't worry. Pick out some thick black curtains and put those up instead. That'll do the trick. Okay, even if that doesn't do it, buy a sleep mask to place over your eyes when you hit the sack. Now, you need to find the right temperature. It's likely you won't have a thermostat on hand, but the trick is to make sure your room is neither the Sahara Desert nor the North Pole. Right in the middle is where you want it. Let's talk lights. After waking up, get some bright light on your face as soon as you can. You'll become more alert, but also sleep better at night. That's because our body has a pretty awesome internal clock. This internal clock is called the circadian rhythm. And simply put, our body tells us when we should wake up and when we should go to bed. Being in the sun or exposed to bright lights keeps this internal clock healthy. When it's working right and you're in bed about to sleep, you'll fall asleep much faster than before. If you can't always be in the sun, that's okay. Grab a few bright light bulbs and spread them around your house. There's also another trick to expose yourself to bright lights if you want to try it. Buy yourself a light therapy box. 
These little things simulate sunshine and are especially useful on those ridiculously short, cloudy, cold winter days. So, you, me, everyone, we all have the habit of staying on our phone until the last minute. If that's not you, how about the TV or your computer? Everyone's plugged into something these days. Sorry, but this is not contributing to a good night's sleep for you. The best thing you can do is choose a bedtime, then set an alarm for around 1-2 to two hours before that. When it goes off, it's your sign to turn off all those electric devices. Well, you don't have to turn them off, but at least stop using them. That blue light coming out of those screens can be pretty disruptive. Instead, pick up a book. Remember those? There'll be a chance you'll fall asleep with it on your face. You might even dream about it. Exercise also helps you sleep better at night. Now's the time to dust off those dumbbells you got laying around. No, I'm not talking about any roommates. But probably the best type of exercise to improve the quality of your sleep is cardio. Go out to the park and run around for a while. No more feeling like you want to take a nap in the middle of the day. Exercise helps you stay awake throughout the day and sleep better through the night. As for naps, be careful with those. That pillow you left on your sofa for that perfect 4 p.m. nap? Get rid of it! And in general, avoid naps after 3 p.m. If you really want to take a nap, do it earlier in the afternoon. Use an alarm and only sleep for 15 or 20 minutes. You don't want to overdo it and be drowsy for the rest of the day. You're looking at the ceiling, trying to fall asleep. Something's not right. Is it supposed to be spinning? You're feeling dizzy all of a sudden. There's an easy solution to this. Scooch over to the side of your bed and place one of your feet on the ground. You'll feel better after a few deep breaths. Late in the day caffeine is a no-no. It stays in your bloodstream for about 6 to 8 hours. If you're one of those people that drinks a cup of coffee and gets really energetic, try not to do it after 3 or 4 p.m. We've all done a late-night fridge run. Milk and cookies are a classic, but I prefer… well, I'll take anything. As it turns out, that's not really helping your mission to sleep better. But there was a study that discovered that if you eat a meal rich in carbs four hours before bed, it helps you sleep. Except another study said that a low-carb diet might help sleep too. The best thing to do is see what works for you. Once you find that perfect sweet spot, you can go ahead and sit at the dinner table without feeling guilty. This next tip involves water. Bath water, to be specific. A shower or bath, as long as it's hot, can definitely help you fall asleep faster. Not only that, but it might help you reach a deeper state of sleep. Not so deep that nothing will wake you, but deep enough for you to wake up good as new. Nocturia. It almost sounds like a magical spell, but it's just what specialists call it when you have to use the bathroom a lot at night. No, that's not magical. We've all had those moments. It feels like the biggest decision of your life. Get out of bed or tough it out. So the best way to prevent this is not to drink liquids before bed. Altogether, duh. It's super easy. Just link it to your no electronics rule. When you wake up, have a tall glass of room temperature water. It'll kickstart your day and help your body feel fresh and rejuvenated. Plus, you just need to rehydrate. You're in bed, but all you're able to do is look at the ceiling, waiting to fall asleep. When that happens, it's better to accept that you just can't sleep right now. Try not to stay in bed for too long, frustrated and angry. You might start mentally linking your frustration to your bed or bedroom. You don't want to have any negative feelings whenever you look at what should be the most relaxing spot in the house. The best thing to do when this happens is to get up. Do something relaxing. Go to your living room and look out the window for a couple of minutes. Avoid looking at the clock. You really don't want to think about sleeping while you're trying to distract yourself from it. When you least expect it, you'll be sleepy again, ready to cover yourself in your bed sheets to get those perfect 8 hours. If you like to write, and it's just one of those nights where nothing's working and your head feels like it's about to burst, 
go sit at your desk, open a notepad, and write your worries away. It might even help to keep a sleep diary. Okay, here's an exercise that can help you sleep while you're in bed. It's a type of body scan exercise. First, lie flat on your back with your legs uncrossed. Place your arms by your sides and try to relax them as much as you can. Now, close your eyes and focus on your breathing. Focus on it for about 2 minutes. That should be enough for you to start feeling relaxed. The next step is to focus on your toes. Check them all and see if you feel any tension down there. Now, picture a river flowing down from your mouth and nose, flowing gently through your entire body, going all the way down to and out of your toes. Breathe deeply and then start letting your breath become softer and softer. Do this with the soles of your feet, then your ankles, calves, knees, thighs. Keep going until you reach your hips. Remember to keep imagining a river flowing through your body. Warning! If you've consumed too much liquid before bedtime, then that river imagery is going to trigger some urgencies other than going to sleep. Lastly, you can do some soft yoga or meditate. The goal here is to help you control your breathing to release stress. Picture this. You're now a master of breathing exercises. And when you close your eyes, you just exhale and all of your worries disappear. Have you ever wondered what these extra holes at the top of your running shoes are for? They're designed so that you can tie the shoes in multiple different ways. That's useful when you want to compensate for things such as a bad stride or even a damaged toe. Plus, you can change the look of your shoes the way you prefer. Many people use a dust jacket of their book as a bookmarker. No problem with that, it will save your book from bent page corners. But the primary purpose of a dust cover is to keep the book safe from distortions. For instance, if you spill juice or drop some of the food on your book while reading it. The Tic Tac dispenser has this little groove on its top, so you can dispense only one Tic Tac at a time. Even though, let's be honest here, nobody does that. Most of us just spill a whole bunch at once and then we wiggle all those extra Tic Tacs back in. Those rubber bumps you see between the tire treads are there for your safety. The raised edges tell you what the minimum height of your tread is. If the bump and the edges are even, it's time for you to visit the tire shop as soon as possible. But if the bumps are well beneath the level of the edges, you're good to go. What about that black grating on the microwave window? It's something called a Faraday shield. And it's there to prevent microwaves from getting away and turning the entire room into a Faraday cage. If the microwaves escape, your meal won't cook properly either. So yep, the cage is not there to make it difficult for you to see your meal while it's cooking. It's keeping the electromagnetic energy inside. How about a wrench compatible screwdriver? Cover your screwdriver with the end of your wrench and you can increase its torque. That's why the head of your screwdriver is designed the way it is. When you have odd angles, you can use this strategy. You've probably heard those myths, the blue side of the eraser can erase the pen. False. Its purpose is to erase a pencil. But in case you're writing something on heavier paper. The blue side can remove smudges you see after using the pink eraser too. Have you ever wondered why oranges in supermarkets mostly come in the red mesh bag? It's a trick to make this food look more orange and encourage you to make a purchase. An extra tip, don't throw away the mesh bag. Tie it up so you can have a small pot scrubber to clean your sink, kitchen, appliances, and dishes. You can see golf balls don't have a perfectly round shape. Their surface is covered with many little dimples, something golf balls didn't always have. At one point, experienced golfers started noticing how through time, older balls with imperfections, such as nicks and bumps, could travel further. Such things create turbulence in the air around the golf ball, which eventually reduces drag. So, manufacturers started producing balls with dimples so they could go farther and faster. You might have noticed that sometimes there are ridges in toothpick tops. It's more hygienic because when you break that off, you can prop the toothpick up on it and it won't touch anything. 
Another safety feature you'll find, this time in your car, is a tab on your rear view mirror. With it, you can change the position of the mirror so you don't get blinded if there's a car behind you with its high beams on. So this little tab helps you control the glare of lights coming from behind. This feature showed up in the 1930s, but in the early 1970s, it became a part of standard equipment in most trucks and cars. Do you see that tiny hole on your iPhone right next to the rear-facing camera? It's a microphone, and it's there so your phone can record sound as you turn your camera around. Some cables have a thick cylinder towards the end of the cord. It's called a ferrite core, or a choke. It's a magnetic iron oxide that stops high-frequency electromagnetic interference. For example, you know that annoying static noise you get if you bring your phone too close to a speaker? This interrupts your call, which is why cable cords with big cylinders are pretty useful, because they prevent these things. Do you know why nearly all luggage bags and backpacks have two zippers? It's way more convenient and easier to open in that way. But not just that, you can also lock these two zippers together to keep the stuff inside your bags safer. You know how toilets at public spots like malls have those big gaps at the bottom? It's primarily for better circulation of air. This type of door also makes it easier to clean the toilet or check if it's occupied if you're standing in line. Other than that, if you get stuck there and the lock gets broken, you still have a way to escape. You can just crawl out. Ever notice those plastic end caps on utility knives? And they also have scales on them, which indicates you may use them multiple times but with sharp edges. You can separate the blades through these plastic end caps. Then you can move the slider and bring the sharp blade to the front. If you've ever taken a moment to examine a regular grocery cart, especially their fold-out section, you probably notice those metal loops jutting out. They're designed to protect the items you carry in your cart. You can use them to hang bags with soft items. You don't want to accidentally squish with heavier products, like bread, or easily breakable things like eggs. Many coffee mugs come with curved notches on their bottom. When you're washing your mugs, put them against the rack at an angle in your dishwasher. This way, the water won't pool in there, so your favorite cup will be completely dry by the time you take it out of the dishwasher. If you're a McFlurry fan, you've probably noticed there's a square hole in the handle of the spoon. It's there so you can attach it to the special machine that mixes the ice cream and your favorite toppings together. The machine has a bar that slips into this square-shaped spoon and then thoroughly stirs it. And you get the spoon so they can minimize the mess during the process. Quite neat, wouldn't you say? A regular milk jug has a dent on one side. Some might see it as a random design decision, but a dent has several purposes. One of them is to get bigger if there's a gas buildup. This happens when your milk is spoiled so you don't even have to try to check this out. Also, the dent is there so the jug doesn't burst if you accidentally drop it. The dent allows the expansion space that deals with the sudden pressure that happens when you drop the jug. Dental floss. Sure, it's important for your dental health, and it's easy to assume what you do with it. But dental floss is great in the kitchen as well because it's a very precise cake slicer, way better than a regular knife. Most kitchen shears have a serrated opening right there at the center where the blades and handles meet. It's something you can use to trim difficult herbs such as rosemary, thyme, or chives. Because of this opening, you don't need to pick the leaves off by hand, but de-stem them in one motion. The majority of gelatin containers or single-serving yogurts come with a tinfoil lid, and in most cases, you can use this covering as a disposable spoon. Just peel away the covering and after a couple of simple folds, you'll have a perfect little spoon for your midday snack. There's nothing better than a nice piece of buttered toast for breakfast, if we're not counting hot fudge sundaes. But if you find it harder to spread out cold butter over your toast, here's an idea. Use a cheese grater. Figure out the amount you need and grate the product. 
The process will also soften the butter, making it easier to spread, and you won't have to melt a too large amount of it in the process. But still, that hot fudge! Dried pasta comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes for a reason. That's because each type of pasta goes best with a particular sauce. Pasta shells, for example, are perfect with denser and chunkier sauces. Why? Because the sauce gets inside the shells, making it easier to serve and eat the dish. The ribbed outer surface also helps with covering the shells in the sauce. If you ever end up burning your cookies, ow! You can save them with your trusty grater, too. Just grate off the blackened parts after carefully taking the cookies from the baking tray. But be careful and wait until the cookies have cooled down. Also, if you ruin their shape a bit, you can always dip them in some melted chocolate. Ooh. After the chocolate cools down, you'll have perfectly shaped cookies. Although, after it gets past your lips and beyond, does the shape of the cookie actually matter? Mm, just saying. If you like adding a lot of ingredients to your sandwiches, but don't really appreciate it when the bread gets soggy, there is a way to reduce the amount of moisture. Pick your sliced tomatoes or cucumbers and place them between two paper towels for up to 5 minutes. After that, you can use them. Also, make sure to spread butter, cheese, or sauces, like mayo or ketchup, onto the bread first. This will help you seal the bread and keep moisture at bay. Some people think that the little white string that you find near an egg yolk needs to be removed before you cook the egg. Well, I'm here to tell you that these strands are called caleza, and you don't actually need to get rid of them. They help keep the yolk in place, at the egg center. A caleza is not going to mess up the consistency or the taste of your food, so removing it is completely up to you. Ever notice that most juice boxes come with two flaps, one on each side? Those are actually handles. Manufacturers design the boxes this way to make it easier for us to hold them. This way, we don't end up squeezing the box, making the juice spill out. Now, you don't need to be a baking pro to know that you can use both white and brown sugar in your recipes. But have you ever wondered what the difference between these two is? It turns out that the only thing that sets them apart is that, during production, a small amount of molasses is added to the brown sugar. Molasses is basically a sort of syrup you get when processing sugarcane. It's usually removed during the refining process. That's how white sugar is produced. But if some amount of molasses remains in the final product, we end up with brown sugar, with its specific taste and darker hue. It's a good thing. There are a lot of things you can put in your dishwasher apart from your dishes. For example, you can clean such things as your silicone oven mitts or the knobs of some kitchen appliances, like your oven or stove. Some kitchen sponges and reusable towels may be safe to clean in the dishwasher as well. Speaking of kitchen cleaning products, there are a lot of things you can do with dish soap, like degriming your patio furniture. Just add a bit of dish detergent to some warm water and use the solution to wipe down your outdoor furniture with a piece of cloth. Finally, rinse it clean using your garden hose. You can also use dish soap to get rid of greasy stains on your clothes. Be it pasta sauce or salad dressings, hey, sometimes we miss our mouths. So just apply a little dish detergent to the stain and then rinse with water. Use non-colored soap for lighter clothes. For more difficult stains, let the dish soap sink in for a bit, then throw the piece of clothing in the washer as usual. And think about maybe getting a bib. If none of the methods have helped you organize your closet, and you're still overwhelmed with large piles of clothes, there's a simple way that might be effective. It's called the one-in, one-out rule. That means for every new piece of clothing you buy, you need to get rid of one you already have. That means you'll always be decluttering your space. To make it easier to find something in your closet, good luck! Keep your most used items at eye level. This way, they'll be easier to find and pull out when you're in a hurry. Those items that you tend to use less often, like your evening clothes, for example, can stay on the shelves above or below your eye level. You can make good use of old spice tins. If you glue some powerful magnets to the inside of the tins, they can double as magnetic shelves. You can use them for all sorts of everyday items, like kitchen pliers, ice cream scoops, mm, or even cutlery. 
You can also place them on any metallic surface, like your refrigerator door. They'll blend in nicely with your kitchen magnets. Hidden in your laundry room, there's a great tool for picking up pet hair. It sometimes works better than lint rollers. Take a dryer sheet and, using some elbow grease, you'll get rid of that dog or cat hair in no time. It works on all sorts of surfaces, but it's especially effective for upholstered furniture. Now, if you don't like it when a door starts squeaking whenever you enter a room, get a bar of soap and rub it straight on the hinges. This will only help for a while, though, but it'll do the trick until you manage to get to a hardware store and, you know, buy some oil. Have you ever noticed that in some elevators, there's a star next to the number of a specific floor? No, it's not to indicate where my office is. <laughs> it's there to point out where the nearest exit is. And it's not always on the first floor. It's most likely located on the floor closest to the street. Have you ever wondered why stop signs are red? Well, back in the day, they didn't actually have any particular color at all. Before the 1920s, they didn't even have a standardized shape. In 1922, though, someone came up with the octagon. But initially, it was painted yellow. All because the red coloring tended to fade out too quickly because of sun exposure. So yellow turned out to be the best option. It took another 30 years for fade-resistant enamel paint to be invented. We ended up changing the color of the stop sign back to red. After all, it's still the best color if you want something to be easily noticeable. Do you know there's a type of rose that can grow taller than people? According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest rose bush ever found grew in Vienna, Austria. It was a staggering 28 and a half feet tall. Yes, it arose to a great height. In the same way we all have unique patterns on our fingerprints, no two tigers have the same set of stripes. It makes it easier for people working with this feline species to distinguish one tiger from another. I'll bet you didn't know the White House has its own flower shop hidden in the basement of the building. It's supposed to provide flower arrangements for all sorts of events that take place there. It's probably no surprise that pizza has become an American staple dish despite its Italian origin. People in the U.S. love it so much that they buy 350 slices of pizza every second in the States. Man, I'm not getting my fair share. To manage the huge demand for this delicious dish, around 17% of all restaurants in the U.S. are pizzerias. Finally, there's a way to make lemon juice without the seeds getting into your beverage. Try cutting the fruit in two and squeezing it with a pair of kitchen tongs. The pointed end of the lemon should be facing down. The juice will flow down, but the seeds will remain inside the lemon. Ooh, lemonade. It goes well with pizza. Various types of cheese have holes for a reason. For example, Swiss cheese is made with special bacteria that produce carbon dioxide. As the CO2 is emitted, it blows like bubblegum, leaving tiny craters, also known as cheese eyes. Then the cheese is cooled down, but the holes stay in place. Over 40 billion Oreos are made every single year. It's the world's most popular manufactured cookie. The geometric design stamped onto these cookies has the Nabisco logo, the symbol of European quality, surrounding the word Oreo. William Turnier created the chocolate cookie design we see today back in 1952. If you use reusable bottles, you probably know that sometimes they smell. Even if you only use it for regular water, it still smells. But it's not the water that smells, it's the microorganisms in it. If you drink water from a bottle, the particles of your saliva and sweat stay in there. Those bacteria start to build up in the bottle, causing the smell. So, if you choose reusable bottles, make sure to wash them every day to prevent those bacteria from building up. After washing, let it dry completely before using it again. Not only are the jeans blue, but the police officers' uniforms as well. The first official police officers appeared in the 19th century in London. They were given a blue uniform to contrast with the red and white uniform that military workers had already been wearing. Two decades afterward, the police force was adopted in the USA, and they followed the patterns. 
The uniform is still blue nowadays because it proved to be a good color. It's not that visible in dark hours, and police officers can observe things and people staying unnoticed. Also, stains aren't that visible on dark material. And, well, everyone knows that police officers wear blue and they're recognized it. So, why change that? Baby carrots are tiny, and unlike regular carrots, wet. Not unlike baby humans. Baby carrots aren't some special sort of carrot. They're actually made of regular carrots by cutting off the skin and outer layers and then polishing them to look that pretty. The problem is, they can't retain moisture. A regular carrot retains some water inside because of the layers that lock it in. Once they're chopped out, baby carrots can dry out easily. So they usually sell them in bags with some water inside. Jeans have metal rivets, and they're there from the very beginning. Jacob Davis, the man who made the first pair of jeans, added copper rivets to spots where pants are more likely to rip, flies in pockets, to make them stronger. Today, they have more of a decorative purpose, since they are distinctive and traditional for jeans. Another special thing about jeans is those tiny pockets they have that seemingly serve no purpose. Well, maybe it's true now. But years ago, when many cowboys were wearing jeans, the pocket was made specifically to keep a pocket watch there. Also, back then, a pair of jeans had just four pockets. That tiny pocket, the watch pocket, two big pockets in front, and just one pocket in the back. Car headrests are all about comfort, and detachable headrests are all about safety. If you pull the headrest out, you'll see two sturdy metal bars. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can use the bars to smash the window and get out. Those little red spots you sometimes see after you crack an egg are nothing to be worried about. Tiny blood spots can be caused by a small rupture in a blood vessel of a hen as it was laying the egg. Eggs with these blood spots are safe to eat, but that spot can be removed if you want. It won't affect the taste of the egg. Oh, that's comforting. Hidden within the Toblerone logo of the mountain is the image of a bear standing on its hind legs, about to eat that yodeler over there. No, not really. This is because bears are a big part of Bern, one of the biggest cities in Switzerland where the founder created the triangular chocolate tree. Toblerone is also a play on the founder's family name, Tobler, and the Italian word Torone for honey and almond nougat. The space below a cup of noodles is there to protect the noodles during transport. This technique is called a middle suspension. Not only are they protected better in their styrofoam cup, but it also helps those noodles soften more evenly and quickly. Even though you might have noticed that the hole on the barrel of ballpoint pens has no purpose, it does. It's called a venting system, which helps the ink flow more smoothly. This way, an even amount of air pressure is created inside and outside the pen, allowing the ink to flow into the point easily. It's not an accident that soy sauce bottles have two spouts. The sauce is liquid, and it flows out of the bottle pretty quickly once you turn it over. Most Asian food lovers will admit they've spilled it at least once in a lifetime. That's why, nowadays, restaurants prefer serving soy sauce in special bottles that have two spouts. This design allows you to control when and how much sauce will come out. Just put your finger on one spout while you pour the sauce through another. If you press your finger tightly to the spout, the sauce will stop flowing, and if you remove your finger, it will flow again. And please do not remove your finger in a restaurant. It will freak everybody out. You've probably noticed that train and bus seats are covered in fabrics with weird patterns. Any idea why? They use these patterns to cover any germs and stains on the seat. Oh boy! The brighter the color and the more patterned it is, the harder it will be for a passenger to notice any stains and get grossed out. Also, the patterns are usually so ugly that no one even wants to look at them for long enough to spot any stains. So yeah, the pattern is there to make you look away. And if you look, to make it less noticeable. No bus will ever have plain white seats. That's a guarantee. The metal tab on soda cans can be flipped around. You can slip a straw in place so you don't have to hold it up your mouth. This stay-on tab replaced the pull ring tab created in the early 60s. You remember those, don't you? 
Those could be quite sharp and easily discarded where they could be a menace for others. Now you can pop your straw straight into one. Also means you can produce some bubbles and make a mess like a 3-year-old. Sometimes, when you purchase an article of clothing, you receive a plastic baggie with an extra button and a swatch of fabric. While the fabric is clearly used to patch holes, it can also be used to test the effects of various cleaners on certain surfaces. It's handy, too, to test wash cycles before using them to wash the whole garment. Escalators have those fluffy black brushes for a similar reason that some have yellow lines on their steps to try and deter people from getting too close to dangerous places. People don't always take notice, and sometimes clothing can drape close to the point where the step meets the edge or skirt. The brush is a little barrier to help prevent this from happening. They can also catch bits of fluff and prevent other small things from falling down into the gaps. Those takeaway containers most associated with Chinese restaurants are designed to not only carry your food home, but to store it in the fridge. They double as a plate, as you can eat straight out of them and don't have to worry about dirty dishes. Yay! They were actually patented way back in 1894 to transport freshly shucked oysters and were known as oyster pails. They were later adapted to use as leak-proof containers for food. Ever wondered why coins have those little ridges along the edge? It's a leftover from earlier times when they were worth more. Counterfeiters could easily file the edges off to sell as gold or silver coins to make some profit. The ridges were created so it was much easier to tell which of the coins had been altered. It's not needed today, but the coins still have that altered style. All crackers and some cookies have holes to make sure the final product has the right texture. These teeny tiny holes allow steam to escape, so your crackers and cookies won't snap. If it weren't for these holes, also known as dockers, steam would build up inside the tree, and the final result might have been scrumptious, but it would have been rather oddly shaped. Dogs like to walk in circles before snoozing because they inherited this behavior pattern from their ancestors. There were no special doggy beds back then, so most pooches would have to push down tall grass to make a sort of snoozing spot. Plus, as a bonus, those movements scared off all the critters lurking in the vegetation. Donuts are ring-shaped for a similar reason. If they hadn't had holes right in the center, the dough there would have always been undercooked. By the way, they're often associated with the police, because back in the 1950s, donut shops were among the only places open late. They were a perfect place for police officers to grab something to eat and even deal with some paperwork during the night shift. Your jeans are blue on the outside and white on the inside because of a smart way to weave the fabric. The warp thread is dyed, while the weft thread has no color. It's just white. This way, manufacturers reduce the amount of dye needed for each piece of clothing. And they're still dyeing to make the jeans. If you ever find yourself stuck in the trunk of your car, stay calm. All cars are supposed to be equipped with an emergency latch to help open the trunk from the inside in the unlikely case it happens. These latches are so well thought out that they can be opened by people of all ages. More so, handles are designed to glow in the dark, too. You can even pull them with the mouth if there's not enough wiggle room to use your hands. Never mind how you ended up in the trunk in the first place. Moving on. If you're ever working with needle and thread, Remember, you don't need to stick the needle directly into the spool. You may end up losing the needle altogether. Not to mention you can easily hurt your fingers. A lot of modern sewing kits these days come with a designated place for safeguarding the needles. It's located at the bottom part of the thread spool. You'll just need to pull it out. It's even made to hold multiple sewing needles at a time. Disposable ballpoint pens come with a little secret of their own. Did you ever notice that in some of them, there's a small hole in the plastic part? It's actually a rudimentary ventilation system. It's supposed to let the ink easily make it to the tip of the pen. Okay, I know it's in the name, but you really don't need to shake the seasoning shaker to get any product out. Don't believe me? Hey, you're not the only one. Go grab your favorite seasoning bottle out of your pantry. If it has one of those removable plastic caps, it's perfect for the experiment. 
Instead of shaking the bottle, try holding it from the plastic cap while it's upside down. Now gently twist the bottle from side to side and, before you know it, you get some gorgeously flowing seasoning without having to wiggle the shaker and make a mess all over the stove. On the same note, mm, most salt and pepper shakers should have ridges on the bottom of the glass portion. In case you get any seasoning stuck in there, place the bottom of the salt shaker against the bottom of the pepper shaker and wiggle it around so the ridges click with each other. The seasoning should easily pour out now without you having to open the bottle. In colder weather, you often have so many clothing layers on you that you can hardly feel the purse or back straps on your shoulder anymore. Not to mention how fast they can slide off. Some jackets come with a built-in solution for that, in the form of a small tab on the shoulder with either a hook or a button. It's meant to be opened and closed comfortably, so you can keep your purse in place at any time. You're most likely using it merely to peel the skin of potatoes, carrots, or cucumbers. But you can use your vegetable peeler for chopping fine strips of onion as well. Just cut the onion into quarters vertically and then start slicing. This might also help out with those embarrassing onion tears. Most people miss this one, but should you ever have a closer look at your toothpaste tube, you will surely see some sort of coloring there, either a dot or a block. Colors can vary. They can be black, green, red, or even blue. These color spots are actually meant to help the assembly machines back at the toothpaste factory. They recognize when and where these machines need to cut the toothpaste tubes and proceed to fold them for packaging. For most types of footwear, if there's anything that seems a bit out of place, always know that it's there for a reason. Most manufacturers don't put extra items on shoes just for fun. It would definitely be a waste of time and resources. For footwear, like boots, for example, there's often a small loop at the top back of the shoe. It's there to help you when you need to put the shoe on, since you can quickly pull on it. Plus, you can also hang the shoe somewhere, most likely to dry, since most boots are meant to be worn in the colder weather. Now, I've been guilty at least once of overdressing with a bunch of layers just so I won't need to jam everything in my check-in bag. But does it become a problem when you actually have to get seated? What do you do with your coat or your jacket? Well, have a closer look next time you board a plane on the seat in front of you. The hook that keeps the tray table upright can double as a jacket hook. As long as you don't need to have any meals while in the air, you're good to go. Now, most mascaras expire within 3-6 to six months, I'm told, depending on the manufacturer. But you can help speed up that process if you're not careful enough. Continuously pumping the mascara wand trying to mix in the product actually pushes more air into the tube. This can make it dry much faster, and you evidently won't get the desired results with it anymore. There's an easy way to check if your mascara is still good enough to use. If you don't hear a popping noise when you take the brush out, you may very well need to go get yourself a new mascara tube. Now I know we're living in the era of Bluetooth-connected devices, but for better quality sound, they still recommend using headphones that connect via audio jacks. Remember seeing black ridges on those jacks? They aren't there just to make them fit when you plug them into your phone or laptop. Made out of a special insulating material, these bands are meant to guard the wires when sound is being transmitted. Based on the number of bands, you can figure out which end goes where. Some empty space under noodles in a cup doesn't mean the company producing them wants to cheat you out of a full portion. No, no. It's a manner of keeping the noodles intact during their transportation. It also helps with the circulation of hot water that is poured over the products before you can enjoy them. The V-shaped neckline was initially designed to serve a bunch of objectives. First, as a way of prolonging the life of the garment that would maintain its shape over the years. It's also there to fit your head through the shirt in case it needs some stretching. This way, it ensures a snugger grip around the neck. Lastly, it helps absorb sweat in case you're wearing the shirt while exercising. Now, it's not necessarily a custom anymore but you may have stumbled upon a dinner jacket with an additional mysterious pocket on the right side. Turns out, this pocket was used by men to easily reach their train tickets, since most of them had to travel to work every day. 
It helped them keep their jacket buttoned up, but also benefited from the use of a pocket. Now it's only added as a decoration, and it doesn't serve an actual purpose anymore. Speaking of things we don't use these days, or at least for their initial purpose, did you know Play-Doh was originally a cleaning product? In the 1920s, the market was in need of a product that could help them wipe the wallpapered areas around coal-burning furnaces. The recipe for what we now know as Play-Doh was thus invented. It was manufactured in white only and was supposed to clean wallpaper by being rolled back and forth over the dirt. It was only later, in the 1940s, that new products for cleaning wallpaper were brought up, and Play-Doh was redirected toward another area of the market. Now, while I enjoy a nice piece of toast for breakfast, isn't it pesky to have to clean out the toaster? Well, not anymore, since I recently found out that toasters have a slide or a panel at the bottom that helps get rid of all those annoying breadcrumbs easily. Now, there used to be a time when you could only have access to video games by inserting cartridges in your console of choice. These tiny objects gave many doctors a lot of headaches. People soon started popping up in hospitals after swallowing small game cartridges, especially the younger generation. Nintendo, the company that manufactures the majority of these devices, had to come up with a creative solution to prevent these accidents. So these days, Nintendo Switch cartridges are purposely coated with specific chemicals that can leave a really bad, bitter taste in the mouth. Not that I'd, you know, recommend you ever try and taste for yourself. Hmm. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click